Welcome back everybody to another video. Thank you for joining me. I am going to do my version of a repotting of a Phalaenopsis. There are certain factors that have not kicked into place, but based on the fact that it is mid-July, I would like to trigger this orchid to do something, otherwise it's going to be far too late in the year for it to initiate any kind of vegetative growth. And that is for me and my climate here in southern Spain fundamental because in the winter they pretty much stop growing. So the reason I'm saying about the uh, vegetative growth and whether I'm going to do this now or wait any longer is that as far as I can see I have absolutely no growing tips and that is what you actually want to see before repotting anything. And especially, as in my case, I'm going to move her into a completely different setup of LECA and self-watering. However, it is warm enough and I'm going to risk it because either way, she needs to come out of that pot. She has been in this pot since I bought her at the beginning, no, mid-March. And since then she's been in bloom, one thing you can do is to actually trigger vegetative growth is cut the spikes. I have not done that. Selfish, I wanted to enjoy the blooms. Let's get her out of the pot and I will walk you through what I do to repot a Phalaenopsis and change her media and her setup. So I have my Leca. I have some calcium and magnesium mixed with some seaweed to soak her while I prepare the self-watering pot and once she's out of her media. She has been soaked prior also in a fertilizer mix and just not only to get energy into her and to reduce the amount of stress but also to be able to take off the media without doing as much damage to the velamen around the roots. Okay, let's get started. Right, let's get her out of the pot. The roots are super healthy. There are some dead ones in there that I can see. And you can judge that by the fact of the difference in the color of the velamen. And the green ones are the healthy ones. They're absorbing moisture and nutrients. You can see the brown in there. Those are dead roots. Now some have already died while in my care. And that is because of the media and possibly the pH issues that I may have, even though I'm trying to judge how much pH goes into this pot. Sometimes the media is more acidic than one would like to believe. I am not going to cut the spike off until I am absolutely sure it needs to be cut off. This could trigger that the blooms drop faster and that is fine. I've had plenty of time to enjoy these blooms. I need to get this orchid into vegetative growth. If I cut the spike off, for example, I will only take the top of the blooms off and leave the rest because it has taken a lot of effort and energy for the orchid to actually produce that spike. And I believe that if it wants to absorb the nutrients and then the spike dies off naturally, I'm fine with that. I much prefer that. If she decides to branch, I won't let her. I want this orchid to start growing new leaves, otherwise there will be no blooms next year. Now you can see how easy the media comes off. A little soak here and there, and it's so much easier and less stress on the velamen of the roots. I do not have a notorious plug in here that is very positive. I'm glad to see that. 
there's usually some kind of sphagnum moss or seedling plug that is absolutely terrible for roots because there's no air circulation in them whatsoever. But this one doesn't have that. I can see white roots. That doesn't mean that they're growing. That only means that they did not get any access to light. So they didn't photosynthesize. They're not dead, they're viable. Very gently teasing out the media. It doesn't feel too broken down. That's positive as well. And it is mainly bark. It's good. It's good. I have a lot of dead roots, which could have a plethora of reasons. But what I do not have is snails. I've had this orchid long enough to watch and observe her. So I will not be spraying with hydrogen peroxide. There's no need. All right. This, please forgive my dirty hands. This is the actual root here. What you see here is squishy brown. When you pull it, this brown is actually the green velamen, but it has died off. And inside is the root. So these are the ones we are going to take off bit by bit. Sometimes you can see what you've got in this case here. There's white roots, these are viable, they're firm. But this root, all the way to the stem, look, it's died off. I will cut this root off completely, despite the fact it has some viable points. These roots here are newer. I'm going to hedge my bets on these new roots, not what was necessarily inside. So I'll be cleaning all of that up. There's a reddish root with a dead tip, but we'll cut that back to where it's viable. This is what I recommend to look out for. Brown, thin, papery, no substance, peels back, super easy. That's absolutely not gonna do anything. I have just cut off a bit of velamen at the base and I want to show you how the root can continue to sustain itself despite the fact that the velamen is compromised. And that's why if I stumble across another case like this, I will not be cutting the roots off. So you can see here, this was at the base of the orchid. I cut that off. Everything here is completely compromised. But look at all the roots underneath this velamen if I had just peeled this off, I would have left them and they would have still served a purpose for a little bit amount of time until a cleanup repot a few months down the line. I don't always do cleanup repots. I watch what my orchid does. And if it has to be done because I see too much decay fluttering about in the pot and around the pot, then I go and do a cleanup repot, which means taking the orchid out of the pot and trimming off any dead roots that have developed since the repot. Here you can see a deteriorated root system, but at the end, there is some life. And that's what you can also do. You can cut it all off to where the healthy part of the root is. So now I'm just checking what I have left to trim and see if I don't get too radical and leave her with as much 
sustenance that she can have in order to help her with this transition. Let's get rid of that piece right there. So now I'm just going to peel off some of the dead vellum because I want to maintain what I have here for as long as possible. So I'm going to take off what I see as completely compromised down to where it's healthy and then leave her be. Prior to this, I have sterilized my scissors. I do that every time I put them away to store them. I put them away sterilized. I'm very impressed by the bark. Very impressed there was no plug of any sort. Foam plug, sphagnum plug, none of that. That is the first time I see an orchid that doesn't come with all those death traps. So I'm hopeful, based on the time of year that it's warm, that she is going to be okay. In my climate, there's always a risk of getting something to grow in a different setup. I've had successes doing this and I've had failures. I'm just talking you through what I do. I've had about 80% success and not all have gone my way, unfortunately. And of course, the majority of the time, these kind of orchids are gifts because people hear that you love orchids and if they're not into the orchid growing hobby themselves, they'll buy you an orchid and it will most likely be a fowl. <laughs> so they're all precious. I just want to cut off the tips here down to where it's green. And then I'm gonna give her another soak just to wash off any of the remaining bits of debris. And we'll take it from there after she's had a bit of a soak. The soak I'm doing is full fertilizer at 300 parts per million. And just to show you, here's the root I said that was red. Not a problem, but you can see that it is compromised at the end. However, as it's growing, it has some good bits. So I've just peeled off the vellum to the bit where I can take off the rot and then keep the other parts intact. And they may die back in time, but that is something I will look into depending on how she is progressing in her new setup. If I'm gonna lose the spike based on what I'm doing now by taking the stake off, then it's a calculated risk because either way, I need her to start vegetative growth. All right, let's get her into a little bit of a soak, my little jacuzzi. And I shall also get a little bit cleaned up and be right back. There's 200 parts per million of MSU fertilizer in here. And then I added 100 of calcium nitrate. And this is now at a pH of 6.3 in this case. The next thing I'm going to do is just protect my steak. You see these steaks, I like them a lot. And I would normally use uh, my homemade one, but I grow my Phalaenopsis orchids pendant. I prefer them to grow naturally pendant. So I normally don't have a supportive steak in order to stake the spikes. But these are nice to support and secure the plant in the pot depending on how the roots are going in. However, 
despite the plastic it only goes so far and then down here it's raw so I protect it with some tape as long the section that goes into the pot I tape up and if the hole in the bottom of the pot where I'm going to put it in is too big the bulk of the tape helps to secure it even more further in order to make it stable in that hole. I can really jam it in without worrying. This protects the steak also from any kind of mold. Once upon a time I used nail polish, but it just got a bit tedious. So I've now resorted to using tape. I'm gonna put the microfiber into my pot. And then I pull up on the middle to create my loop. And in she goes. Filling up enough lecker on the bottom to go underneath the loop. This way I can get the wicking effect to go just a couple of centimeters higher, which will in end effect work up until about here. And I do have a dry top layer. Sometimes depending on the circumstances of the orchid, I work around the dry top layer and sometimes the dry top layer works for me. All right. Let's get you situated and let's see where the stake is going to go. Look at what the additional soak took off. So that's good. The brown is the seaweed in there. It's not the debris making that discoloration in the water. All right, I'm just checking where she's going to be sitting in the pot in order to judge where I'm gonna put my steak. And then I just find one of the empty holes down here in the pot and I'll put the steak through that. That's better. I have her a little bit lower at the moment, just so that I can see how she settles in. And if I need to pull her up a bit, I will do so while tapping the pot and jiggling the lecker into place. We'll just fill her up with more lecker. She is correcting herself bit by bit. With the movement of the lacquer in the pot, that's why I always go a little bit lower because they will rise eventually of their own accord. And sometimes because you're patting away, as the lacquer fills in around the pot, it raises 
the orchid. If that doesn't happen, when you pat, you can pull the orchid up gently in order to lower the lecker in and around the root system. Which I'm gonna try and do now. Sorry if it makes a lot of noise. Okay, I'm going to tie her off first and then I will see what needs to be done further. You see this tape is also awesome because it, it grabs onto the wire. It acts like a resistance to it as well. I'm trying to keep my hands out of the shot here. Just so you can see what I'm doing bringing the stake in a bit closer because now I want to somehow achieve the fact that she's going to grow towards me if she's going to go pendant. In order to manipulate her growing habit to how I would like it to happen is that the light source will be on this side. That's how I can somehow make her grow this way. And the reason that I want to do it that way, as opposed to the other way, would be no different really, is because the weight of the plant is right here. Here's where the most of her roots are. And if she grows in the opposite direction, chances are she will pull herself out at an angle of the pot, which means I would have to reposition her again, and I'd like to avoid that. I have some phalaenopsis that have uh, had most of the root system on the opposite side where the stake was and they still grew in that direction to where the stake was because eventually I could pull the stake out but where the weight of the orchid is that is where the light source should be so that she will actually weigh herself and grow into and lean into the pot now when it comes to cutting a spike Taking off the flowers will trigger growth, new leaf growth, which then adds to the nodes for future spikes. It'll also trigger root growth. So my, my recommendation always is, if you're gonna cut off blooms, cut them off to the top node and not the whole spike. In my opinion, there's a lot of energy in these spikes and that can be disputed. There's no science behind this. It's just in my head, I'm thinking, it's taken so much time to grow this spike. What did it need? There must be something it can use in here. If this orchid were more established and let's say five years in this pot doing well, etc., I would just cut the spike and let her do her thing and then give me some more next year. The fact that she has only just now been repotted even though it's nice and warm outside there are nutrients in here i believe are useful so in the coming week two weeks i'm going to watch what she's going to do with the blooms if she's going to drop them that's fine it's about time she's bloomed long enough if she drops them i'm going to then watch the tip of the spike and see what happens i will not let her bloom again if the tip of the spike goes brown, I'm gonna leave the spike on until she has taken it back or it dries off, and then I'll cut it off. I have a branching spike. She's so gorgeous. Same thing, I'm gonna watch what the blooms do, and if need be, I will also watch carefully what she does with the, with the tip here. If she's gonna start budding out more, I will cut the tip of this spike down to here. Okay, then I have these nodes to consider because she can branch and create another spike. And I won't let that happen. If should that happen, I'll cut it below that node. And so on and so forth until she has either absorbed the spike on her own or I can stop her bloom from blooming. My preference is drop the bloom, absorb the spike, start growing roots and get some new leaves growing as well. 
that is my preference but orchids they will do what they want to do when they do it and I just hope that she's going to be okay in this setup like I said before 80% of the time it has worked perfectly and then there's always that 20% of what happened what went wrong was it something I did was it something I said that is how I report from organic media into inorganic media, in this case, lecker and a self-watering setup. And there's one more little thing left to do. Let's fill the reservoir with some seaweed for growth hormones and 300 parts per million of fertilizer, which includes MSU and calcium nitrate and my pH in this case because the lecker is fresh and new my pH is 5.8 because the lecker has been soaking in RO water which has a pH of 8 so the nutrients at 5.8 as it wicks up the pH will change and give me a higher pH and this way all the nutrients are being absorbed at a specific level thank you thank you very much for watching I hope that this was helpful if I did not finish a train of thought, if there is something I wasn't qualifying properly enough, any questions whatsoever, please ask away in the comments below. I will be extremely happy to go further into depth behind my process of repotting from organic into LECA with self-watering. Thank you very much everybody for watching. And I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.